Welcome back everyone, I'm the Silver Watchman, and this is episode number 31 of Dead Cells. I'm doing so many series right now, I'm legitimately losing track of numbers. Ah, oh, man. Purified water. What an unequivoc unequivocable luxury. <sighs> I apologize. So, in the previous episode, we read through John chapter 4. In this episode, we are just reading through John chapter 5 and breaking it down. I was going to read chapters 5 and 6, but unfortunately, 6 has 71 verses, and I know I won't have enough time to break down at all. So, chapter 6 is going to have to be for uh, episode 32. So, we're reading out of the King James Version of the Bible, still. This is chapter 5. And I'd like to pray over you all. Most High, I come before you today to bless every single person that is watching this video. Even if they only stay here for a minute, even if they're only here for 30 seconds, I ask that you shall bless them. May they find peace in their life and a pathway to you. They may know salvation the way you have taught me. May you give them understanding and discernment the way you shared with me. If not better. Thank you for doing so. Amen. Huh. <sighs> so without further ado, let us begin at another festival. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep, sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lay a great lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after troubling, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, Thou that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, 
take up thy bed and walk. Then as they him. What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which made him whole, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh here hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because not only because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the Father do, for what things for what for what things soever he doeth these also doeth the son likewise for the father loveth the son and sheweth him all things that himself doeth and he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel for as the father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them even so the Son quickeneth whom he will, for the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even, even as they honor thy Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they, shall, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and have and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man marvel not at this for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. He sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye may that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in this light in his light but i have greater witness than that of john for of the works which the father hath given me to finish the same works that i do bear witness of me that the father hath sent me 
and the Father himself, which hath sent me, have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Yo, Arla, are you good over there? Boy, now is not the time. So, we have finished the chapter of John 5. When I return after the intermission, I shall break down this chapter via the help of the Holy Spirit. I shall return.
And I'm back. So, at the beginning of this chapter, we see a stage being set. A pool that gets stirred up by an angel in a place called Bethsaida, which, if I go to my, go to the internet, it's an old Aramaic word, which means house or place of fishing. So as soon as these waters are stirred up, we see this in verses one through four, setting the stage of why this man is there, the man that needs healing. An angel will come in, stir up the waters, and the first person to enter into those waters, after they are stirred up, is instantly made whole or healed of all of their infirmities. That's what it means to be made whole, which shows that if you are damaged, there are parts missing from you. You're not whole. Which is an interesting way to look at it. So now, there's a man that, that's trying to get up there as fast as he can, but he's had an infirmity 30 and 8 years, as we see in verse 5. Could he be older than 38? Could be. Could he be exactly 38? Could also be. But one thing we have to note here is that the second that Jesus saw him, he knew that he needed help. And so, he asks him this question, wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus, now performing his, you know, the next miracle that's written down. Rise and take up thy bed and walk. Now, it's also noted after this that it is the Sabbath day or Saturday, a day of rest. A day where you're not allowed to work at all. In our society, we have long since forgotten that. And now, in many cases, it's a necessity to work. Or you have no place to live. Nevertheless, though, we shall continue. So these people were asking... The guy that was healed was like, who was it that healed me? Because as soon as Jesus healed the man, that was the only purpose he had there. To go there, to heal that man. And to leave. And that's exactly what he did. He leaves afterward, which is what we see. In verse 13. So, we fast forward to later on, where the man is now going to the temple, most likely to pay his respects to the Most High. Where we see the man interact with Jesus again, in which Jesus says to him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Which is another thing that needs to be noted. When God heals you, chances are he's protecting you from something worse. When he says, don't go back in that place that got you in the issue. Don't do the thing that got you hurt after you've been healed or it's gonna be worse. And the same thing goes when demonic spirits are removed from the people 
or removed from a person if they continue the same lifestyle, continue being where they were, the demon that had left them will come back with seven more that are worse than it and possess you even worse. Why? It's an easy place to come back to. If you're kicked out of a place and you see the doors are, are unlocked after you're kicked out and your key still works, what's going to stop you? From coming back there and inviting some of your friends now that you know you're always going to be able to get back in. But afterwards, now the man knows who the person is that healed him. And he goes and he tells the rest of the Jews, yeah, Jesus is the one that healed me. And he's the one who told me, hey, carry my bed because he healed me. And they were mad. They were mad not because the man was healed, but because Jesus had done work on the Sabbath day. So, then we see in the latter half of the chapter Where Jesus says this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So, this is an important thing to note. All power, all authority, and all glory had been given to Jesus Christ. And judgment doesn't come from the Father now, but from the Son. But what does it mean to be quickened? Let's see. Let's take a look at it. To make alive, revive, to cause to cause to be enlivened, enlivened, stimulate, quickened. So, just as the father can raise people from the dead, so can the son, showing that the son is just as much God as the father. As the Son is only an extension of the Father. We see this that all men should honor the Son as they honor the Father, showing that Jesus, the Son, should be given just as much respect as if you were speaking to the Most High, Yahuwah. Well, actually, his name is Yahusha, but for some reason we call him Jesus. Ever since he has taught me his name, I use his name. But I, as I'm reading the word, I'm breaking it down to you in a way that you guys can understand. So 
So now we see verse 24, which is another thing that we need to take a note of. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. Essentially saying this, The only way to live is to hear the word of the Most High and do it. And believe it. So then we go we go throughout, and this is Jesus speaking after most likely he's been confronted by the people as to why he healed somebody in the Sabbath day. All of this is, is Jesus saying, I am God, I am the most high. You cannot and will not stop me from doing the same thing that the most high would do. Showing that God the Father is merciful, kind, and loving, and will heal you, should you come to him. And so the Son shall do the same. But in order to access the Father, you need to go through the Son. So then he tells them in verse 39, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think that ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Verse 40, Ye will not come to me that ye might have life, showing that people are unwilling to come to Jesus for salvation, and yet will keep on with their works in whatever they believe, their traditions, instead of coming to him. Denying the word and their trust of him. Because as they deny it, they deny his authority. Because the word will back up Jesus and Jesus the word, for Jesus is the word made flesh. But then he asks a very probing question. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? So, essentially what he's saying here is, why do you want rapport from people when you should be more focused on the opinion of God. Why are you focused on the opinion and the views of other people that are the same as you? As we see in verse 41, I receive not honor from men. Verse 42, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. Verse 43, I come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his, in his own name, him ye will receive, showing that When we come in the name of the Most High, 
people that are not of God are not going to understand you or receive you. <clears throat> Jesus was doing everything that he was doing not to get praise from men but to fulfill the will of God. And that is the majority of the point of what he is saying from verses 19 through 47. Then he asks something else. No, then he says something else. I apologize, I misread that. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. That's interesting. Who is this one that is the accuser? The accuser is none other than the adversary, the devil himself. Of whose real name I will not say, lest he know that I know. For I want to save that day, to use his real name, when I will have to battle him in the future. What a wild day that's going to be. Nevertheless, though, what is basically being said here at the very end is that Jesus is not the one that accuses you to the Father, to the Most High. He's the one that defends you in the light of your sin. If you give your life to him and you come to him believing in who he is, what he had done, that he lived, died, re and resurrected for your sins and repent of them and walk away from your sins, he's the one that goes forward and says, this one is covered in my blood. His sins are gone. For I have already paid his debt of all of his sins in which afterwards then you're let into heaven but to get to that point you need to give your life over to Yahuwah to, to Yahuwah and Yahusha they're the same person rejoice now when thine enemy not, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and it turn away his wrath from him. That's in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 17 and 18. So, when you guys have the time, I want you to call out to God. And ask him to dwell in your heart. For the past couple of years, I've been doing the prayer for you guys. But I am understanding now that is not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is for me to encourage you guys. Because if I do the prayer repeatedly, then you guys are not. There is no way for you to receive salvation because if you're repeating after me but not praying from the depths of your souls to try to reach God he'll hear you if you truly intend on reaching him and talking to him he will hear your prayer however small however quiet wherever you are he will hear you and he will answer 
and he'll be by your side for the rest of your days as he's with me. I have not truly had a real want because he he fulfills all of my needs. All of my worries are gone because of him. I want you guys to have this same level of confidence in your relationship with him, but that will only happen if you reach out to him. So, without further ado, if you want to do more to represent God, or represent the Most High, or represent the channel, go and help out the least of your societies. That means comforting the widowed, remembering your veterans, treating your prisoners like, like human beings, helping out the poor. It doesn't have to be much. Even something as simple as a sandwich. Or just listening to them and treating them like human beings. Protecting the innocent. That could be innocent of mind or innocent of status for some people are wrongly accused at times but it is up to us to know the difference and if that's a bit much for you guys to do then hey let's try something else how about you uh, share the video with your friends families if you have any issues with how I have taught and you feel like you could break down the chapters better. I want you to bring to put in your breakdown of the chapters in a comment. Comments down below. You could be the first person to comment, and I'll do my best to get to you as soon as I can. Unless I'm in the middle of a stream, in which case I will respond to you verbally. But this is not a stream, this is a video. So I'll be click clacking away saying my response to you guys to the best of my ability I'm very proud of you guys for making it all the way to the end of the video by the way for those of you that have for those of you that haven't and you dipped out early on I thank you for staying as much as you did I'm very grateful, and I hope you return for another video. May the love of Yahuwah and Yahusha, and the spirit of them both, or in the spirit of him, essentially, follow you all the days of your life. I thank you all for watching. Glory be to the Most High. This is the Silver Watchman signing out.